I want to just briefly review dark matter and how we detect it. We've talked about this before, right? So within galaxies, um, we take the rotation curves of objects. These could be stars or this could be gas that we're measuring as we go from a galaxy center to its edge and beyond its visible edge all the way out, right? And we just detect dark matter based on the gravitational pull causing the speeds of objects far from its center to be faster than that we would expect based on only the visible mass that we see. So this is how we measure dark matter within galaxies. And then between galaxies, there's many different methods. So similar to the idea of measuring the motion of stars, we can also measure the motion of galaxies within clusters around their common center of mass. And if there's more dark matter, then those galaxies within the cluster will move faster than they would if there was less dark matter. So we can calculate the amount of dark matter within clusters in that way. Um, we can also uh, see how dark matter within a cluster is pulling on members at the edge of a cluster or just outside of it. So if the, a cluster and a nearby galaxy are moving apart from each other, but they're moving slower than we would expect from Hubble's law, then the slowness is due to the extra pull of dark matter from the cluster. So that's a pretty interesting way to measure dark matter. Um, we can also measure using gravitational lensing, which basically just says when you have a bunch of mass in space, light beams will bend around it. And so you can measure the amount of mass based on the bending of objects in the background. And then finally, um, if there's more dark matter in a galaxy cluster, then the gas within that galaxy cluster will also be or rotating, orbiting faster, just like the galaxies themselves would be. And because it's in motion, it gets hot and it glows. So when we see brighter, um, what we call intracluster gas, the gas between galaxies in a cluster, then we know that there's more dark matter there. So tons of ways that we can measure dark matter. Yet we still don't really know what it is. We've already talked about the possible identities here. Um, two of the main candidates are the machos and the wimps. So remember the machos are massive compact halo objects. So these are basically just large regular matter. So just stuff that we already know about, but that we don't detect very easily. Um, we discussed white dwarfs and brown dwarfs being some of the possibilities here. Um, and it's not particularly likely because we, we can see the radiation from those objects, though it is difficult to de detect because they're very dim. And then the WIMPs, those are the weakly interacting massive particles. That's basically just saying that there's some sort of subatomic particle that makes up dark matter and we can start to theorize about the possible properties those particles will have. And we do experiments at the LHC to try to rule them out. All right, so there's a couple different types of WIMPs that I wanna expound on a little bit. Um, one of them is called hot dark matter. And this basically just means that those dark matter particles are relatively light and fast moving, and therefore they don't clump together very well in the early universe. The other kind is called cold dark matter. And these are just heavy and slow moving. And so then because they're cooler, meaning slower motion, then they do clump together in the early universe. And as we've seen from our redshift surveys, um, there's a lot of clumping that happens. That's exactly how we come to get galaxies. And so therefore cold dark matter is more likely than hot dark matter. So when we build models of the universe um, and try to do simulations to see if those simulations match what we observe out there, then cold dark matter seems to match our observations better than hot dark matter does.